I'm going to introduce three mathematical properties here, but really concentrate on the distributive property. But the first one is called the commutative property. This is for addition and multiplication. All this really means is that 4 times 3, for example, is the same thing as 3 times 4. The order that you put these in really doesn't matter for multiplication. 4 times 3, same as uh, 3 times 4. Similarly, for addition, let's say we had 5 plus 12 plus 9, the order that we write these in doesn't matter. So we can write this is the same as 9 plus 5 plus 12. These are the same. So obviously with division or subtraction, that's not, that's not the case. For example, with subtraction, uh, 10 minus 8 is not the same thing as 8 minus 10. So the commutative property only works with multiplication and addition, not subtraction or division. Second property is called the associative property. And this just has to do with grouping with uh, parentheses. For example, and this again is with addition and multiplication. If we group these together, remember we're always doing parentheses first when we evaluate mathematical operations. But this could easily be written where the parentheses are around these two numbers. These are going to give you the same answer. So with addition, it really doesn't matter how you are grouping these. Same thing with uh, multiplication. It doesn't matter how we group them with the parentheses. So again, this is with addition and multiplication. The property that's a little more complicated is called the distributive property. And here you can think about it as you are distributing multiplication over addition. And this is a type of problem that you see, for example, 6, we'll use um, x. So if you're doing more sort of algebraic things. So remember when you write 6 times something in parentheses, this is a multiplication. So 6 times 3 plus x. What we're going to do is distribute this 6 over the addition. So the first thing we're going to do is we take the first factor inside the parentheses and multiply it by 6. So 6 times 3, which is 18, plus 6 times x, which is 6x. So these two um, ways to write that it are the same. 6 times 3 plus x is the same as 18 plus 6x. Do another one. 5, 9x minus 2. Now here it depends on how you think about things. You can either think of this as uh, minus 2 or you can think of it as plus negative 2 if you're used to thinking in addition. So it was normally, a, a, it was originally a, a minus 2. Now we're going to say plus negative 2 and do the same thing. 5 times 9x is 45x. Remember when you have a number beside your variable, it just means multiplication, so 9 times x. 5 times 9x is 45x, you just multiply the numbers together. Plus 5 times negative 2, remember we changed this to a negative. So 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. When you're adding a negative, you're just subtracting. So it's 45x minus 10. If we have negative 3, 8 plus 2x inside the parentheses. Again, we just multiply the first one. Negative 3 times 8, negative 24, plus, and we do the second one, negative 3 times 2x, which is negative 6x. If you're adding a negative, you're just subtracting. So remember it was negative 24 minus 
6x. Now you can also do this the opposite way where you're given this answer and you're trying to get it into something with a parentheses. You start with 18 plus 6x. The way you're going to work backwards is you look at these two numbers and decide what's the largest number that will divide into each of those evenly. And if you're unsure on how to find those factors, look at my video on divisibility on my Facebook page. So we look at these two and we know that 6 can be divided into both 18 and 6. So we're going to pull the 6 out. Now we just have to decide, what, and the way you mathematically you do is 18 divided by 6 is 3 because we want to know what times 6 is going to give us 18 or 18 divided by 6 gives us that answer. 6 divided by 6 is 1. Instead of writing 1x, we can just write that as x. So we went from there to there. And remember, to get to go from here to here, we just multiplied through. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 6 times x, 6, or, yeah, 6x. If we're going to do 45x minus 10, Again, if it helps you, you can think of this as a plus negative 10. What number goes into both 45 and 10? The largest number that goes into both 45 and 10 evenly. That would be 5. So we pull a 5 out. 45 divided by 5 is 9. Remember, it's 45x, so it's 9x. 45x divided by 5 is 9x plus negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. And we can write that as 9x minus 2.